So over the last decade, leg kicks have proved their efficacy. Well-placed leg kicks are now an essential tool in any fighter's arsenal, especially when it comes to striking. We've seen many fall prey to these leg kicks increasingly over the past few years, and this has made shin conditioning become more of a necessity rather than a choice. Of course, we all know the ways of the old school Muay Thai guys who would kick banana trees or roll their shins to deaden their nerves. Anyway, the real science behind shin conditioning is pretty cool. So I thought I'd dive into the bone remodeling process, why you definitely shouldn't be trying to deaden your nerves, and give you some tips on how to properly work these into your training. We need to understand how bones adapt to external stresses. Like any other tissue in the body, they adapt to the demands that we place on them. Now this is commonly referred to as the SED principle, which stands for Specific Adaptation to Imposed Demands. Our skeletal system is an incredible structure, capable of adapting and becoming stronger when subjected to repeated stress. And this process is called bone remodeling. And when fighters condition their shins, they're stimulating this very process. Bone remodeling occurs through two main processes, resorption and formation. Resorption involves the breaking down of old bone tissue, while formation is the creation of new bone tissue. This interplay helps our bones adapt and become more dense, stronger, and more resilient. So when fighters condition their shins, they're essentially triggering this remodeling process in order to make their bones more durable. This mechanical stress stimulates resorption, which then triggers processes that start new bone formation. Now this process happens repeatedly over and over again until the bone becomes more dense and resilient to the specific demand that kicking places on the shins. Okay, so now let's get to the part where I feel like I may piss a lot of you off. You should not be trying to deaden the nerves of your shin bone. And listen, I'll be the first one to say whenever I started training Taekwondo at a young age, and no, not the super Americanized version now where the girl you met at the bar whispers in your ear that she's a black belt in karate after training for like three years. Like, I mean, this was in the 90s in a very small dojo, really dingy, and some training and teaching styles that absolutely would not fly today. Anyway, this was at a young age and I started doing some of that old school type of shin conditioning. Shit was super painful. Now, as I got into Muay Thai a little later in life, when I was in college and actually learning about nerve physiology, I started to question this idea. And after grad school, I had pretty much written it off as something that I should do as part of my training. Now, just let me explain why. Pain Explain simply is your body's alarm system for when something's going wrong. And your nerves carry the signals to the brain to let your body know that something's not right. Think about it like this. What would you say to me if you came to me with wrist pain that started after your boxing workouts, let's say? And all I said was, well, here's the thing. You've got little weak bitch wrists and you should double your punching volume to the point where it hurts so much that the nerves in your wrist die. You'd tell me to fuck off, or you should anyway. So why are we propagating this idea that you have to stop the nerves in your shin from doing their job? Now there is some truth to this idea, but the proper term you're looking for is sensitization, which refers to your peripheral nerve's ability to adapt to certain stimulus. If you were to roll your shins or kick banana trees to the point where your shins lost the nerve sensation, you would lose your ability to feel most other types of sensation as well. What we want is to sensitize the nervous system to a particular type of stimulus like a kick. And this is the point of the video where we're gonna talk about how to take advantage of bone remodeling and shin sensitization and work it into your training. Also, consider subscribing if you're finding value. It really helps the channel out. Even though I'm calling a lot of what you may already have believed into question, especially regarding sensitizing the nerves in your shins, the number one age-old advice that still rings true is kick the heavy bag. A lot. Now, that doesn't mean roundhouse kick the heavy bag 100 times a day, every day for the rest of your life. What it does mean, especially if you're a beginner, is start off with maybe 50 kicks each leg with about 50% effort. See how your legs feel after training and maybe even the next day. If there's minimal to moderate soreness, and there will be soreness, then increase the effort on your next kicking workout. And once you get to the point where you're doing 100% effort kicks, that's when you start to increase the amount of repetition. And remember, these processes in your body take months and years to adapt, so you have to be patient. The second is running. Running is an incredible incredible way to make sure that you don't lose bone density. So for fighters, you really don't have to run much at a time because your cardio is really going to be reinforced by your sparring or your conditioning workout. 30 to 45 minute easy jogs will do the job and help you maintain some good foundational aerobic capacity. Lower body closed chain lifts like weighted lunges or squats are also wonderful exercises for shin conditioning. The research on resistance training and its positive effects on bone density is robust and has a place in any good training program. The third is nutrition. We can impose any stimulus on the body that we want to in order to to promote adaptation. But if the environment within our body is not conducive to healing, we aren't maximizing our potential. Very broadly speaking, just make sure you're not eating in a caloric deficit and that you're getting your fruits and vegetables so you aren't micronutrient deficient, particularly calcium and vitamin D, which are important for bone remodeling. And lastly, just listen to and take care of your body. And I don't want this to be misconstrued with me telling you not to train hard. You should be training hard. You should be training very hard, but not all the time. And training hard does not have to mean crushing your shins every day because some gym bro who doesn't understand the human body is telling you to. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time.